and welcome to 2024 on our first episode of The Charge, ZapMap's monthly update into EV charging data and insights. We're going to take a look at the charging stats for 2023 and a few highlights from our EV driver survey. Jade, how did 2024 end up in the end? So we ended up on just under 54,000 devices on ZapMap and that was an increase in 45% versus last year. Um, 10,500 of those were rapid or ultra rapid devices. So we passed that nice milestone in December and that's an increase of 52% on last year. Now, when you look at the number of EVs out there, they were up 51% on last year. So actually that growth is quite in line between the high powered and the number of EVs. And it's an extra 315,000 EVs that have gone onto the road. Yeah, it's great, lots, lots of new drivers. And then on the charging, looking at the pace of installation, when we look at 2022, there were just over 700 net new devices. So that means additional charges that were added to ZapMap once taking into account decommissioned devices. And in 2023, 1,400. Overall, that meant that there was 89% more charges installed in 2023 versus 2022. Overall, I think a really good year for charger installations. Yeah, definitely. And as, as we talk about often, not all chargers are created equal. Oh, no. Um, so actually, when you look at it specifically, the ultra rapid devices, those 100 kilowatt plus devices, they were up 112% on last year. So over double the number of those out there for drivers to use than there were the year before. Yeah, and, we, and we've seen that over the year, haven't we? That there really is this trend from the, the rapid, the 50 kilowatt chargers to the 100, 150, 350 kilowatt ultra rapid, rapid chargers, which, you know, which is really good news. Um, and in parallel to that, there's also been the increase in charging hubs, which mm. we've talked about before. And that's gone up from 110 end of 2022 to 264 at the end of 2023. You know, really quite a quite a dramatic increase. Yeah, yeah, a really big increase on those numbers. It's not all rosy though in the high powered area because we, we saw that report from the RAC last week, which which highlighted that actually only around a third to 40 percent of all motorway service locations actually had the sort of the, the had hit the government's target so noted this government's target of six high power chargers per location um, and when we looked at the numbers across the whole UK we got to a similar figure I think the good news is that there are at least 20 locations which have more than 10 and there's the stars of the show Reading West has got 30 um, Exeter has got 24 I think it is so you know that's good news but it is a little worrying that there's still over 20 locations motorway service locations that only have one rapid charger and you know we know but talking to the to the charge point operators or the motorway service people it's really all about the grid connections yeah it's, it's really about the grid connections and those and it's what the 950 million pound rapid charging fund was supposed to address and um, mm. so that was talked about several years ago we've had na there's now at least progress in that 70 million of that is going to be released as part of the pilot um, applications for that are closing 28th of Feb and then um, that should be used across the sort of space in five to ten sites so I know there's certainly a lot of charge point operators DNOs um, and EV drivers who are really really keen to see the, that money get used this year and those sites get opened up yeah but it's not it's not all about the MSAs when you actually look at those charging hubs four out of five of them are installed at places which is not um, a motorway service area. And by the way, 264 hubs, a big shout out to CPOs and DNOs. Each one of those is a huge project. Yeah, yeah, it's huge projects. And my favourite anecdote was from a contact at DNO who said each one of those big projects, um, it's the equivalent in terms of the energy required is actually building the shard. <laughs> um, so yeah, really big projects that they're putting in. So sticking with the, the high powered charges, when we're looking at the geographical spread of them, it actually over 2023 there has been it has been pretty well distributed of the 12 geographical areas across the uk all but three of them have now got 500 rapid or ultra rapid chargers and in fact greater london southeast and southwest have now joined scotland with over a thousand rapid chargers or ultra rapid chargers yeah so it's definitely more evenly spread than we might have expected and of the ones that don't have 500 then Wales, the North East and Northern Ireland. Actually, in Northern Ireland, there are some really green shoots showing there. So there were only 24 devices that were high powered at the end of 2022. And that's now up to 96. Um, so nearly quadrupled uh, just over the course of a year. And it's really
really testament to the hard work of associations like the EVANI and associated bodies who are really working hard to try and increase that rollout. And we're really hoping that's going to continue this year. Yeah, no, that's really good, good, good to see. I mean, I think the, the other aspect we haven't yet talked about is, is on-street chargers. Um, so, you know, reasonable 72% increase in on-street chargers. And now there's 20,000 or so across the UK. They are predominantly concentrated in, in Greater London for reasons we've outlined before. You know, household income, lack of off-street parking, um, the, the, the ULEs and, and the congestion charge. And, and actually, those local authorities in London are pretty, pretty engaged and have standardised processes. Yeah, and the, it's pretty patchy elsewhere across the UK. And that's what the Levi Fund is there to try and address. So that money for the first tranche of local authorities that have got that money, they should be starting to get their contracts in place and starting their rollout from September of this year. So that should be make a, make a difference on that side of things. OK, so moving on from the charge point infrastructure numbers to some highlights from our recent EV driver survey. Um, so, Jade, what, I mean, what were, you, what were the key highlights from your point of view? Yeah, so from my point of view, I think what we saw was that EV drivers were really satisfied with driving their EV. Only 3% said they wanted to go back to a traditional petrol or diesel ICE vehicle. About the same level as we've had over the last few years. Yeah, so that's been pretty consistent over the last few years. Um, and of the people that actually have a, an EV and a petrol or diesel vehicle, so dual fuel households, um, for those, as we'd expect, um, the majority of their journeys, their local commuting, their, their short local journeys, they do in their EV. Um, but also really encouragingly, over 80% said that they also do long journeys of over 100 miles in their EV as well. Mm. I mean, uh, yeah, so I mean, great. And But what about those, the ones, do we find out what reason those 3% were, you know, not happy with their EV? Yeah, so the 3% who said they would want to return, um, the considerations there really was public charging network, mm. um, the public charging experience was absolutely the top reason there um, mm. and then it was issues around the cost of the EV and then the cost effectiveness of actually running it. Yeah I mean disappointing so whilst there's lots of good news in EV charging as we've already talked about there's definitely still are some issues and I know when we dig when we dug deeper it was reliability of the chargers number one um, not enough chargers number two and then the cost cost of the charging with reliability not so much whether it's working or not but just sort of a proxy for charger anxiety paying different issues like that yeah and how we've seen that change last year to this year the good news was that the reliability and the availability have gone down into in the amount of concern that people had over those but the cost to charge their ev has gone up um, and interestingly over the last year the price index we've shown an increase in price of 11 to 12 percent for charging on the public network um, whereas the year before we saw that actually more than double so although that has kind of flattened off how much those prices are going up the concern has risen so i think that's a lot to do with the cost of living crisis that the drivers are going through at the moment mm, i mean you can we can just see how the price really does impact how much and where people people charge because we've also looked at the pop, most popular locations and a couple of years ago or last year supermarkets were the number one but now we're seeing msa and charging hubs are the number one and supermarkets has fallen off and i think that's basically because the supermarkets have stopped that that free charging provision that that, that they used to have yeah definitely we've definitely seen that that switch um and i think you know overall we've been able to talk about a tiny proportion of what is in the survey here mm. um, if you want to go onto the website you can download the key findings where there's more information as well as our stats pages um, and then you can also purchase the full report if you want to have the the full in-depth report from the survey yeah great that's really good so 2024 feels like an exciting but really important year for the ev market zev mandates in place and when we when the market reaches that 22 percent that will mean around Four to 500,000 more BEV drivers out on the road. They're not going to be early adopters. They're going to have a high expectation of the charging experience. And I think the industry, you know, as it is, needs to really collaborate and work together to ensure that the consumer experience at charging is, is big. I mean, of course, that's so important to ZapMap. It's the core of what we do. And we're going to continue in the app to surface that information the best we can, add new features to the app, 
continue to report on the market and also support businesses on their electrification journey. That's the end of the charge for this month. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you next month where we'll be discussing how that charging rollout has happened, some more thoughts from the survey, and we're also going to have a special uh, surprise guest on the show. So thanks very much and see you next month.